Hi, Algebra 1 students. Here we are in section 12.5. We're going to be dividing polynomials, which is really going to take off from the idea that we learned last section when we were dividing um, expressions, rational expressions. So let's take a look at how we can approach this problem. There are a couple ways we, that we can look at a problem like this. Here we're dividing a polynomial means many terms. 3r squared minus 15r, we're dividing it by 3r. And what we can do is we can write it as 3r squared minus 15r divided by 3r, right? Watch this. If I treat them like fractions like we did in the last section, we could write this as 3r squared minus 15r over 1 times 1 over 3r. Remember taking the reciprocal after changing the division sign to multiplication. Then we can bring all things together, 3r squared minus 15r all of that over 3r. It is not okay for me to just cancel out one way. Remember, we don't cancel out when things are added together. We cancel out when we can get things multiplied together because canceling is the opposite of multiplication. So we need things multiplied in order to undo it. All right. So what I'm going to do with this numerator is I'm going to factor out a 3r because I realize that there is a greater common factor between the two. So when I do that, 3r times the quantity of r minus that was 15, 5 is what we're left with. So then 3r is at the bottom, and now it's safe to cancel these guys out. Another way of looking at this, and this is something that we talked about probably earlier in the year, is that if you have a single term in the denominator, it has to, let me make this a little bit more uh, prominent. If you have a single term in the denominator, it has to divide evenly into each of the terms in the numerator in order to simplify. And so that's what we're playing off of and um, dealing with here. So r minus 5 is what that looks like. In this lesson, though, we're going to talk about long division, dividing like we did when we were maybe in the fourth, fifth, sixth grade, I don't know, whenever you learned how to do long division. So here's what we're going to do. We are literally going to long divide and get the same answer of r minus 5. Watch. 3r divides into 3r squared how many times? Well, that's kind of a weird question to ask. The better question or maybe the easier question for us to think about is 3r times what gives me 3r squared? And that would be r. So I put an r right there at the top. And just like in long division, I'm going to multiply this number here times my divisor. So I get 3r squared. When I subtract, I get nothing here, but I bring down the next term, minus 15r. And so the next thing you're going to do is take 3r and divide it evenly into a negative 15r. When you do that, you get a minus 5 because 3r times minus 5 gives you that negative 15r. Multiply it together, we get the minus 5r. We subtract that, which means to add that, which means to get 0, and there's no remainder. Hint, hint, we sometimes do get remainders when dealing with problems like this, and we'll see the circumstance in which that can happen. So again, our answer is r minus 5 when we divide 3r squared minus 15r divided by r. Let's look at this next one. So dividing a polynomial by a monomial, another thing that we can do is divide each term, or we can look at long division, or we could see if we could factor. So let's see what happens. So the last thing we mentioned with the last problem is recognizing that another way of looking at a problem like this is literally having the um, dividend in the numerator and the divisor in the denominator and then thinking about it like we said before which was to consider dividing each term by the denominator when this works when you have a monomial and so you would end up with n squared over 5n plus 10n over 5n plus 12n or plus 12 over 5n. And then when you simplify this to the best of your ability, you get n over 5 plus 2 plus 12 over 5n. Not necessarily pretty, but true, right? We're just applying our, our skills. We could do long division, I suppose, and kind of work it out, but it gets a little bit complicated. I think this would be the more straightforward way of handling something like this. But if you really like, oh, I want to see it in long division style, you can talk to me. We can zoom and do it together. Okay, so in this circumstance where we're dividing by binomial, what we want to do, I'm going to write it as the fraction that we know it can be written as s squared plus x, I mean 6s minus 7. All of that is technically over 7 plus uh, s plus 7. 
what you could first do is look to see if you can factor anything. And, and honestly, we can factor this. And so this is making my life a lot easier. So when I factor the, the top, the bottom was already factored as much as it could be, I realized that the denominator has a common factor, that in fact, it is a factor of the numerator. So I'm left with S minus one. What would this have looked like if I long divided? I know what you're thinking. Why is she doing this? We already got the answer. But I want you to get used to this idea of long division because sometimes it's going to be necessary. Sometimes we won't really have another choice. So S plus seven is out here. How many times is S going to S squared? It goes S times because S times S is going to give me S squared. Notice where I put it. I like to line it up along the common term. So I'm going to put an S here, but I'm putting it over top of the S squared because I know when I multiply S times S, I get S squared, S times seven, I get a plus seven S. I have to subtract all of this. When I subtract, what happens is I'm changing the sign of everything inside of the parentheses. So this is now minus S squared, sweet delicious, that's gone. And this is now a minus seven S and this gives me a minus one S. You know what I do next? I drop the next term down. The next thing I'm going to do is divide um, S, how many times does S go into um, minus one S? And that would be minus one. Look, I'm putting the constant term over the constant. Negative one times S is going to be a negative one S. Negative one times seven is going to be a negative seven. This being exactly the same shows me that I have no remainder because when I subtract, everything cancels away. All right, so you see I got the same answer here. Again, S minus one is what happens or is the quotient of this particular um, thing. So in this problem, we're asked to do it by a, a long division style. Let's see if we could have factored before. So let's see, two numbers that multiply to give me 24 yet when I, negative 24, yet when I add them up, I get a positive three. And so my mind is saying 12 and two, no, um, eight and three, no. And really I, I can't find anything. And even more specifically, because I'm gonna eventually write this as, or I'm thinking about this as x squared plus three x minus 24 over x minus four, what's the factor I really would love to see come out in the numerator? I hope, you're, I hope you realize, I really am hoping that X minus four would be a factor, but there's no way that that could happen because, and the reason why is that way I can cancel and my division time is done. And I realize that there's no way, you could even think about it, it would have to be like X plus six in order to get the negative 24 and then it doesn't work out, I get a positive two in the center. So with that in mind, when you see that there's no way to factor and break the bad boy down, that's when you have long division. That's when long division is gonna be pretty essential um, you've got this binomial term that you're dividing into. Let's go ahead and deal with it. So we're going to, now that we've been practicing long division, this shouldn't be too bad for you. Um, so X goes into X squared, X times, notice where I put the X, X times X is X squared minus four X. Remember we are subtracting this just like we would if we were doing long division and X squared minus X squared, that gets canceled out and X, uh, three X minus a minus four X minus a minus, right? which really means plus four X is going to give me seven X. Now that I have the seven X, I'm going to drop this negative 24 down here. And I'm going to ask myself how many times does X go into seven X? And that would be seven times. Seven times um, X is seven X and seven times a negative 28. Sorry, seven times a negative four is a negative 28. Now it's time for me to subtract. Subtracting is all good here, but not so much here. This becomes a plus sign because of the negative negative, and therefore I'm left off with four. My remainder is four. So sometimes these problems can actually have a remainder. Do you remember what we do when we have a remainder so as not to write it as a remainder? Let me give you a quick example. So what if I had three goes into 10? And we know three, or let me try 11. Three goes into 11, um, three times, three times three is nine. Subtract, I get two. Instead of writing remainder two, there came a time in our math career where we knew to put the remainder over the divisor. So we re read this as three and two thirds, right? We're gonna do the same thing here. 
we put the remainder over the divisor. So our answer is x plus 7, this is our quotient, plus the remainder over the divisor. All right, so this is a way that we sometimes handle that in order to give kind of a complete quotient, a complete answer. The long division aspect isn't so bad. There is one thing that you have to keep in mind though. When you're doing long division with polynomials, you need to make sure that every term is represented. What do I mean? Well, here, this is a a to the first power, but there's no a to the second power, and there is an a to the third power. Here's the deal. I need to put that a to the second power in there, but I don't want to change the value of my problem. So I put a to the third power plus, watch this, 0 a to the second power plus 8a uh, minus 24. This is how I set up my problem. The next thing I'm going to do is just like we did before. How many times is a going to a to the third power? Or what times a is going to give me a to the third power? That's a squared. Notice where I put my a squared. a squared times a is a to the third power minus 2a squared. Of course, you know we're going to subtract. When I do that, that goes away. Over here, we have a positive 2a squared. Minus minus gives me a plus. Bring down this 8a. Ask myself how many times does a go into 2a squared? Well, myself told me it was plus 2a. 2a times that gives me 2a squared minus 4a. When I do 2a times a negative 2, I'm going to put parentheses around that and subtract. These guys cancel out. Over here, this is a plus 4a. Therefore, this is 12a. And finally, almost finally. I've got a minus 24 and I'm going to divide this into that. A goes into 12A 12 times. Notice where I'm putting this answer, constant over constant. 12A minus 24. I have no remainder and this was my answer. So maybe I could have factored this. But alas, I didn't need to because I have the power of long division. So remember, long division is definitely an option. You need to make sure that everything, all your powers are in descending order and there's none that are skipped. And I think that's brought us to the end of our lesson. Let me talk to you soon. Let me know if there's any questions or concern. Please take care, guys. Bye-bye.